Hi guys! In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to raise baby chicks without losing any. And also I'm going to be sharing with you tips on how I raise the old chicks on my very first go with zero mortalities. So please stick around. Welcome back to Farm Up. My name is Daniel, and on this channel, Farm Up, I talk about raising poultry. Um, how to raise your chickens so that you get low mortality or zero mortalities, so that you get more money, so that everything is easy, simpler, and you get richer. So like I said, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to raise baby chicks very effectively. So please get a pen and paper. Don't trust your brain so much, okay? Yeah, just get a pen and paper. It's proven that if you write down, you remember more. Now I raised baby chicks and I had almost zero mortality. The few birds that died were because of naivety. This is what happened. Around three or four birds out of the 800 that I brought fell in the fire. I didn't know how to deal with it at the moment. At that moment, I was using stoves, charcoal stoves. Charcoal is coal. If you're in a country where they don't use the word charcoal. I was using those stoves for heating up the chicken house and when the birds had started you know getting some feathers and flying probably at around two weeks um some of them started flying into the charcoal stove so around two or three fell inside and they died now that was because of naivety but i learned my lesson otherwise i can say very proudly that i raised my baby chickens very well so if you're watching this video i want to know have you raised baby chickens before uh, and if yes what has your experience been like Please comment below and share with me your experiences about raising baby chickens or the old chicks. Mine was not bad because I took the right steps. It was my very first time but I read up, watched a lot of other YouTube videos, went to a few farms and I followed the right steps. Even despite the fact that I knew nothing, I managed to raise most of them. So right now we're going to assume that you've chosen the kind of birds you want to start with, you know, whether it's broilers or layers or local chicken or... Maybe you just have your chickens at home. But just in case you haven't done that, I have a video where I talk about choosing between layers and broilers. I'll just leave it right here in the link so you can watch it so that you know which one to choose just before you start. Now when it comes to raising the old chicks, the number one and most important thing is the quality of the birds that you're going to bring in. Not the breed, but the quality. Let's say, for example, you've chosen layers, yeah? It's important that you get your layers from a trusted breeder, yeah? Why? Because it doesn't matter how good your feeds are. If you get your birds from a poor breeder, where the breed is not the best, it doesn't matter how well you feed the birds, they won't grow, they won't grow up well. You might have, you know, a lot of mortality. Some breeders don't maintain good quality in their breeders. So the birds get sick right after you bring them in. You know, they get typhoid. You know, there's a lot of probably bacterial infections inside the, um, the hatcheries themselves. So it is important that you get your, your, your chickens from a trusted breeder. And then again, if you get a poor breed, when they grow up, they won't lay as many eggs, for example, if they are layers or if they are broilers, they won't, um, they won't gain the maximum weight. So in the end, you're going to go and blame the person who supplied you with the feeds. Yet the feeds were actually good and the breed was bad. Now, the second thing are the feeds. Yeah. So it doesn't matter how good the breed is. If you have bad feeds, the chickens will get stunted yeah you'll have your lay layers and then they reach the 25th week and they have given you no egg why because you've gotten the wrong type of the feeds so it is important that you get the right feeds and you get the right quality or breed of the birds that's the first and most important thing in reducing your mortality then you're going to choose the location of your brooder so there are different kind of kinds of brooders there are people who will brood their birds in the same house where they're going to raise the birds that's what I did for my chicken house. And if you notice, uh, right here, I'm preparing this house to bring in the old chicks. Right now, I can't bring them in because the feeds for the baby chickens are not available. The guys who sell the feeds don't have them. And I don't want to risk bringing my good chicks and the feeds are very horrible. So I'm waiting. So probably in um, three weeks time or a month's time, I'll have brought my day old chicks. But you can keep the birds in the same place this place will be able to accommodate a thousand birds but i'll just divide a small section of it and keep my day old birds there and then keep expanding as they come in or as they grow 
The other option is to make a separate house, which is just special for brooding. For example, if you're going to be putting your birds in cages, you can't, you know, raise them in cages. So you're going to have to have a separate house specifically for brooding. By the way, if you don't know what brooding is, because I'm going to be using the word the whole time, brooding is simply the process of raising baby chicks or the old chicks to the level where they can support themselves. Because normally, chickens have their mothers. They will lay eggs, hatch them, and they will look after the babies until the babies can, you know, they have feathers and but when you bring in birds commercially or even you have your own local chickens at home but you want to raise them up more effectively you will give them particular specific conditions that will enable you raise them better so ideally the brooder is the mother of the babies so you can have a separate house where you just do that bring in your baby chickens once they have grown up and you know you're beyond brooding time brooding time will vary depending on the kinds of birds you have you know it's shorter for 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 broilers because broilers grow quicker they put on feathers quicker a bit longer for layers and then it will vary but it doesn't matter where you choose your brooder to be there are a few things that must remain constant number one it should be clean clean very clean number two it should be warm and number three it should be aerated now when you get your brooding room again you have two options with what you can do with with the room number one you can separate the birds into smaller groups you know you will get a probably form a circle where you can put the birds you can use cardboard paper cardboard paper is something like this you know cardboard paper and just make a circle like this all around and then you keep your birds in there so you keep them in small manageable groups the second option is you know to just put them in one huge room that's that's not as good because they're, they're not as controlled yeah so i would advise that you go for the option where you put them in smaller groups probably 200 300 and then keep them there separate them for example i'm going to be bringing um 1000 birds so i'll probably have five groups of 200 so like i said you can use cardboard like this or you can use you can also use plywood plywood is like this it's like timber but a bit harder and again it can it can bend so you can form a circular shape this one is spoiled and used, eh? but I just brought it around so that you guys can see. It. So you'll use it and form a brooder all around. The other thing that you need to do inside the brooder is that you have to avoid corners. Yeah. So, like you say, like you notice, I told you to make a circular shape all around. Avoid corners because what happens is that when the birds are feeling cold, they're going to pile up in the corners, and once they pile up in the corners, what do you expect? Suffocation and death. So you'll just wake up in the morning and find dead birds and you'll be wondering what's happening. So avoid corners. If you have any corners inside your chicken house, put cardboard like this. Now the next most important thing is the litter. Yeah. Now when you're going to be putting in your birds, the litter needs to be thick. You need to put in this litter before you bring the birds. Yeah. As you guys can see, my this 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 litter is quite thick. Yeah. Um this is the the height of the liters yeah so you want your liter to be three to four inches thick this is quite thick three to four inches thick why do you want the liter to be thick number one it will absorb the ammonia when the chickens poop and all that stuff the liter will absorb the chicken poop and has absorb that ammonia ammonia is a very horrible gas it's toxic to the birds can cause them respiratory diseases and you know second week third week your birds are already dying Number two, the litter helps in providing warmth. Yeah, You don't want to leave a plain concrete floor because it's cold. This litter will keep the birds warm. Number three, it provides comfort for the birds. Yeah, No one wants to lay down in a, on a thick, you know, hard surface. No, they want to lay down on a soft place that they would enjoy. So the litter provides for that. The other thing is that the litter should be clean and dry and disinfected. So don't bring in wet litter or don't bring in litter that has been used for the old chicks because you're going to be bringing in infections from previous birds and you need to make sure it's dry so as you guys can see i'm sure you've seen from my previous videos i recorded one or two videos from here this litter has been here for some time why because i want it to dry completely dry out and i've already fumigated it once to disinfect it so that's very important then when you bring in your day old birds you're not going to put your day old birds on top of this litter why 
this litter can be very deadly to the old birds. You're going to put either there's something called brooder paper, or you can use newspapers, or you can use cardboards, just like this, yeah? So for the first three, four, you know, days, one week, you want to put cardboard on top. Now, this protects the baby chickens or the chicks from the litter. This litter is deadly to baby chicks. Why? Number one, it has very small tiny particles and the chickens can breathe it in. Remember, they haven't developed any immunity or anything like this. They can breathe it in, get allergies or, you know, get infection, respiratory infections. Number two, and more importantly, the chicks on day one cannot differentiate between feeds and your litter. Yeah? They won't be able to differentiate. So my chickens down there have grown up. They know what feed is. They'll be able to pick out feed from this litter. But baby chickens cannot. So you'll put the feeds on a surface where they can't access the litter. And then after some time, they'll have learned to differentiate. Then after, you know, four days, five days, you can remove the peppers and the chickens then can move on the litter. Now, like I said, you need to disinfect the brooder. You need to disinfect the brooder at least two times before you bring in your birds. There are a lot of disinfectants that can be used. For my case, I was using bleach. Yeah, Bleach is sodium hypochlorite. So bleach can be used only if there are no live chickens in the place. Yeah, Because it's, it's, it, it, it bleaches, as you can hear. Yeah, It bleaches. So you don't want to use it when you have live chickens around. But if you... Have live chickens around. There are a lot of disinfectants that are safe for the birds that are present on the market. So please go to your vet or your closest vet shop and buy disinfectant from there. But I've disinfected this place once already. I'm going to disinfect it two more times before I bring in the birds. So you want to disinfect your place. You don't want to have any chances of disease. By the way, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Yeah, Subscribe to the channel. That way you never miss out on anything and hit that notification bell. Also, don't forget to like and share this video with anyone who you think it might benefit. Then the other thing that's very important is the lighting. Lighting is very important. For baby chickens, light has to be present 24-7. Yeah? Why? Because these are baby chickens. You want them to mature. You want them to grow as quick as possible. So you want them to feed day and night. And how are they going to feed in the night when they can't see? So you need to make sure there is light inside the chicken house. Now there are very many alternatives for light, you know. You can use, you know, uh, lamps, you can use candles, you can use electricity, solar, anything that can provide light. But you need to make sure the light is bright enough for you to read, yeah. If you cannot read properly inside that light, it's not good enough. So make sure the place is bright enough. Of course, sometimes it will be quite hard. You know, you're in places where you can't get electricity. You're quite broke. Then you can compromise. But if you can handle getting light while you can read, that would be a good and better option. Then the other thing, probably the most important thing during brooding is heat. Yeah? So heat is very important. What are you going to use to heat the chicken house? Because remember, these chickens have no mother. The baby chickens, they have no mother. They have no one to keep them under their wings. You're going to be the mother. That heat is going to be the mother. So you need them to be in a place where you can provide enough heat. Now, heat can be provided by a lot of different ways. Anything that can provide heat, ideally, will work. You know, you can use charcoal. Um, I use charcoal, you know, charcoal with stoves, you know, you can use electricity, you can use um, candles, anything that provides it, you know, kerosene lamps. But I would advise you against using kerosene lamps because kerosene lamps produce a lot of carbon monoxide and carbon monoxide is a toxic gas. It can suffocate the birds and they die. And do you remember what our goal is? Zero deaths. We don't want a single death. So charcoal, coal is a better option. Of course, it's not environmentally safe and if you had a better option you know go for the other options but many times you know we are thinking about our survival and it's a luxury we can't afford so we'll have to use charcoal a few times but whatever you're going to use make sure the chicken house is warm enough the other things are the feeders yeah so there are a lot of feeders that can be used yeah. there are plastic feeders for feeding baby chickens so you'll just put the feed there because remember they are they are little babies they can't look for the feed anywhere else so you'll put the feeds there and then after some time as after they have started growing then you can introduce you know a bit bigger feeders like this this is made from wood very cheap less than half a dollar 
I bought this less than half a dollar. So you put the feeds in here and they start feeding. And then as they grow, then you can introduce the adult feeders, which I have in the chicken house. So you'll need around one feeder for every 30 bags. Of course, that will again vary depending on how big the feeder is. But again, you can even use cardboard, yeah? You don't need to go and buy plastic feeders or this, yeah? You see this? This is cardboard. This was just plain cardboard. And then I just folded it in the corners, put cello tape or whatever you can use in the corners, like these corners. You'll just fold them like this, then put cello tape like this, and then you have a feeder ready for use. So please, don't suffer. Whatever you can use or whatever you have, you can use to make feeders. Then the next thing are drinkers. Yeah, so you're going to need baby drinkers. These are cheap drinkers. This is just three liters. You need them to be low enough so that the birds can access them. But again, not too big so that, you know, the birds can fall inside and drown. Yeah, so this is good enough. It's three liters. It's a bit pricey, just a bit pricey between, I think I bought it between four and five dollars. Yeah, but you need drinkers. Then both the feeders and the drinkers, you need to make sure they are clean and disinfected. Yeah, disinfect them and wash them before the birds come. Then the other thing that you're going to need is security. Your chicken house should be proof to, you know, wild animals, rodents, all those kinds of things. Snakes, cats. Cats are very notorious, yeah? You know, they'll, they'll take advantage of any hole present in your chicken house. So make sure all holes have been blocked so that cats can't, be, can't come in, snakes cannot come in, dogs and all those kinds of things. Because after everything you've done, you don't want a cat to be the thing that's going to kill your, you know, 20, 30 birds. So now we've got everything that we need and the day of bringing the birds in has arrived. What do we do? We're going to start with transporting the birds. So when you're transporting these birds, you need to make sure they have enough aeration. These birds can stand up to, you know, 24 hours without feed and drink from the hatchery. So just make sure they are aerated and then avoid very bumpy rides, yeah? Because by the time the birds arrive, they're going to be stressed. So you want to reduce on the stress as much as possible because stress alone can kill the birds. Now, when they arrive, you want to make sure that by the time they arrive, your brooder is already warm. By one, what do I mean? 35 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to put up a picture of the temperature uh, that the chicken house should be at as the days go by. But you can either use a thermometer or if you don't have a thermometer, for example, I didn't use a thermometer. What do you do? You monitor the behavior of the birds. So once you put in these birds inside the brooder, if you notice that the birds are clamping together, then you know it is too cold, yeah? They are feeling cold and you need to increase on the heat. Then if the, the birds are panting, they are moving too far away from your heat source, then you know that it's too hot and you need to decrease the temperature. So you can just use the, temp, the, the behavior of the birds to monitor and know whether it's too hot and too cold. Um, if the temperature is just right, the birds will be well distributed within your brooder. They won't, you know, be clamping together. They won't be running away into the corners, running away from the, from the heat. I think it's going to rain, so let me try to hurry up so that we get done with this. Then the other thing, as you're getting your birds from the boxes from which they have been delivered, you want to handle them carefully. When you're putting them down on your surface, don't just throw them, don't just pour them, no. Get them. Remember, they are fragile, they are stressed, they have been traveling, you know. So you want to handle them gently, put them down very gently. Then by the time they arrive, you must have clean and fresh water, yeah. Now this water, you want to make sure the birds take only water for the first two hours on arrival to the farm. Why? Number one, the birds are dehydrated. Yeah, so you want to provide them with water to rehydrate them. Number two, this water should have vitamins and glucose. This glucose is to reduce on the, you no, know, the vitamins are to reduce on the stress and the glucose to provide energy to the birds. Then the other thing to do with the drinkers is that you need to change the water at least three times every day. I know it's quite tedious and stressful, but you need to make sure the water is changed at least three times a day. Three times a day, you get out the drinkers, wash them, clean them, and put them in with new and fresh water. Then when it comes to the feeds, you want to give the chickens um, the good feeds that you've provided the birds with. So at the beginning, you're going to give the birds around 13 grams per bird per day, per chick per day. But again, that could vary depending on the exact breed of the birds. So you should ask the breeder of the birds for the chart of how much you should be giving the birds as the days go by. And the thing that you need to make sure is that for the first few weeks, 
feet should be always available. We want these birds to grow up as fast as possible. Then, like I said, remove the newspapers or the brooder paper or the cardboard that you put on top of the sawdust between three days and five days. By then, they are good enough. They have gotten accustomed and make sure there is sawdust. Make sure there is um, litter. Yeah? Whatever you can use for your litter, make sure there is litter. I've seen guys, pictures of guys on Facebook keeping their chickens on surfaces, you know, on plain cement, on tiles. That's bad for the birds. Don't blame yourself if some of your birds die. Then the other thing, show the birds some love. Yeah? Show the birds love. If you take good care of the birds, if you treasure them and treat them well, they're going to grow up well and they're going to reward you. They will lay eggs, you know. They will give you that good weight that you need for the meat. So take good care of the birds. Treat them like they are your babies. Because remember, they have no mother. You're their mother. So that was it. I hope you've learned how to look after baby chicks. I hope you don't lose any. So please um, watch more of my videos right here. And you can click right here to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. And please stay blessed as you farm up. See you next time.